Welcome back to DesignSmith. In today's video, we will delve into the fascinating world of Swiss graphic design, also known as the international typographic style. We'll explore its origins, key characteristics, and why it has remained so influential and effective in the world of design. Before we get started, please consider subscribing to support the channel. Swiss graphic design, often referred to as the international typographic style, emerged in the 1950s in Switzerland and Germany. This Swiss style is renowned for its clarity, precision, and objectivity. Swiss design was a reaction against the chaotic and decorative styles that preceded it. It emphasized simplicity, readability, and a scientific approach to composition. The 1950s were a period of significant cultural and technological change. The aftermath of World War II brought about a desire for order, structure, and rationality. In the world of design, this translated into a move away from the ornate and subjective styles that had dominated the early 20th century. Designers began to seek out new methods and philosophies that prioritized function and clarity. Before the emergence of Swiss design, many graphic styles were heavily decorative and often chaotic. Art Nouveau, with its intricate and flowing lines, and Art Deco, characterized by rich colors and bold geometric shapes, were popular but often lacked the clarity and straightforward communication that was becoming necessary in a rapidly modernizing world. The cluttered and ornate nature of these styles made them less suitable for the functional needs of the post-war era. Swiss design was a direct response to this need for clear and effective communication. It emphasized simplicity and readability above all else. This was achieved through the use of grid systems, which provided a structured framework for organizing content. The grid system ensured that all elements were aligned and balanced, creating a sense of order and harmony. This approach made it easier for viewers to navigate and understand the information being presented. Sans serif typefaces, such as Helvetica and Universe, were preferred for their clean and modern appearance. These fonts were designed to be legible and unadorned, further enhancing the readability of Swiss design. The use of sans serif typefaces was a deliberate choice to strip away unnecessary ornamentation and focus on the essential elements of the design. Swiss design took a scientific approach to composition, treating design as a problem-solving process rather than an artistic endeavor. This approach was influenced by the principles of the Bauhaus and Constructivist movements, which emphasized functionality and rationality. Designers like Joseph Muller Brockman and Armin Hoffman played a crucial role in developing and promoting this method. The grid system allowed designers to create structured and logical layouts, ensuring that every element had a specific place and purpose. This methodical arrangement helped to convey information in a clear and concise manner, making the design more effective and accessible. Objective photography was another key element of Swiss design. Instead of relying on illustrations, which could be subjective and interpretive, designers used photographs to present information in an objective and realistic way. This preference for photography aligned with the overall goal of clarity and objectivity, providing a direct and unambiguous visual representation of the subject matter. The roots of Swiss design can be traced back to two major early 20th century art movements, the Bauhaus movement in Germany and the Constructivist movement in Russia. Both movements were revolutionary in their focus on functionality, simplicity, and the use of geometric forms and grid systems. The Bauhaus movement, founded by Walter Gropius in 1919, was a school of art, design, and architecture that sought to unify art with craftsmanship and technology. The Bauhaus ethos was to create products that were both functional and aesthetically pleasing, stripping away any superfluous elements. This focus on practicality and the use of clean, simple lines directly influenced the development of Swiss design. The Bauhaus also emphasized the importance of typography and layout, encouraging designers to think critically about how text and images were arranged on a page. In Russia, the constructivist movement, which began around 1913, also played a crucial role in shaping Swiss design. Constructivists like El Lisitsky and Alexander Rodchenko believed that art should serve a social purpose and that design should be functional and accessible to all. They used bold geometric shapes, strong diagonals, and a limited color palette to create designs that were both dynamic and easy to understand. The constructivist approach to design, with its emphasis on clarity and efficiency, resonated strongly with Swiss designers. However, Swiss designers took these ideas even further, creating a cohesive and rigorous design philosophy that became known as the international typographic style. 
This style was characterized by a strong adherence to a grid system, the use of sans serif typefaces, and a focus on objective photography rather than illustration. One of the key figures in the development of Swiss design was Joseph Muller Brockmann. Born in 1914 in Switzerland, Muller Brockmann trained as a graphic designer and later became a teacher and author. His work exemplified the principles of the international typographic style, particularly the use of grid systems to create harmonious and orderly layouts. He believed that the grid was an essential tool for achieving clarity and consistency in design. Muller Brockman also preferred sans serif typefaces such as Helvetica for their clean and modern appearance. He argued that sans serif fonts were more legible and suited the minimalist aesthetic of Swiss design. Additionally, Muller Brockman placed a strong emphasis on photography over illustration, believing that photographs provided a more objective and truthful representation of reality. In 1961, Muller Brockman published his seminal book, Grid Systems and Graphic Design. This book became a Bible for designers worldwide, providing a detailed explanation of how to use grid systems to create effective and visually appealing designs. The book's influence can still be seen in contemporary design practices. Another pivotal figure in Swiss design was Armin Hoffmann, born in 1920. Hoffmann taught at the Basel School of Design and was instrumental in shaping the school's curriculum and philosophy. His approach to design was slightly different from Muller Brockmann's, emphasizing the importance of contrast, visual tension, and the use of negative space. Hoffman believed that effective design required a careful balance between different elements, such as light and dark, large and small, and positive and negative space. This approach added a dynamic quality to his work, making it both engaging and visually striking. Hoffman's influence spread through his teachings and his book, Graphic Design Manual, published in 1965. This book outlined his design principles and provided practical guidance for creating visually compelling compositions. Hoffman's emphasis on visual balance and tension continues to inspire designers today. Through the contributions of Joseph Muller Brockman, Armin Hoffman, and other influential designers, Swiss design evolved into a distinct and highly effective style. The international typographic style, with its emphasis on clarity, simplicity, and functionality, has left an indelible mark on the world of graphic design. Understanding the historical roots and key figures of Swiss design helps us appreciate the elements that define this influential style. Let's explore the key characteristics that make Swiss design so distinctive and effective. The grid system is a fundamental aspect of Swiss design, serving as the backbone for layout and composition. The use of grids provides a structured framework that helps to organize content in a logical and readable manner. This approach ensures that elements are aligned and spaced consistently, creating a harmonious and balanced appearance. Grids are essentially invisible guides that designers use to position text, images, and other elements on a page. By dividing the space into a series of columns and rows, grids help to maintain order and coherence, making the design easy to navigate. This methodical arrangement of elements is especially important in complex layouts such as magazines, brochures, and websites, where clarity and readability are paramount. One of the key advantages to using a grid system is that it allows for flexibility within a structured framework. Designers can experiment with different alignments and placements while ensuring that the overall design remains cohesive. This balance between structure and flexibility is a hallmark of Swiss design, enabling the creation of visually appealing and effective compositions. Sans serif fonts are a staple of Swiss design, chosen for their simplicity, legibility, and modern appearance. Sans serif typefaces such as Helvetica and Universe lack the decorative strokes or serifs found at the end of letters in serif fonts. This clean and straightforward design makes sans serif fonts highly readable, especially at smaller sizes. Helvetica, designed by Max Miedinger in 1957, is perhaps the most famous of all sans serif typefaces and epitomizes the Swiss design ethos. Its neutral and versatile nature allows it to be used in a wide range of contexts, from corporate branding to public signage. Helvetica's uniform stroke width and well-proportioned letter forms contribute to its clarity and legibility, making it a favorite among designers seeking a timeless and effective typeface. Universe, designed by Adrian Frutiger in 1957, is another iconic sans serif typeface that embodies the principles of Swiss design. Universe was one of the first typefaces to be designed in a cohesive family, with multiple weights and styles that could be used interchangeably. This versatility and consistency makes Universe a valuable tool for creating coherent and flexible typographic systems. 
Swiss design often favors photography over illustration to convey messages. This preference for photography is rooted in the desire to present information in an objective and realistic manner. Photographs are seen as a more direct and truthful representation of reality, making them ideal for conveying factual information and creating an immediate visual impact. Objective photography in Swiss design is typically characterized by clean, uncluttered images that focus on the subject matter without any unnecessary embellishments. This approach aligns with the overall minimalist aesthetic of Swiss design, where every element serves a specific purpose. By using photography, designers can create a sense of authenticity and immediacy. Swiss design initially utilized objective photography to convey messages clearly and realistically, ensuring a direct and unambiguous visual representation. Over time, this evolved into the use of simple geometric shapes to symbolize real-world elements on posters, maintaining clarity while allowing for more abstract and versatile compositions. Today, both objective photography and geometric shapes are employed in Swiss design, reflecting its commitment to clarity and adaptability. Less is more is a core principle of Swiss design. The focus is on conveying the message as clearly and efficiently as possible, which means avoiding unnecessary embellishments and sticking to the essential elements. This minimalist approach ensures that the design is not only visually appealing, but also functional and easy to understand. Minimalism in Swiss design is achieved through the use of simple geometric shapes, limited color palettes, and clean lines. By stripping away extraneous details, designers can draw attention to the most important elements and create a sense of clarity and focus. This approach also helps to reduce visual clutter, making it easier for the viewer to process the information. The emphasis on minimalism extends to typography, layout, and imagery, with each element carefully considered to ensure that it contributes to the overall effectiveness of the design. This disciplined approach results in designs that are both aesthetically pleasing and highly functional, standing the test of time. Despite the structured nature of the grid system, Swiss design often employs asymmetrical layouts to create dynamic and engaging compositions. This approach adds visual interest while maintaining balance and order, demonstrating that structure and creativity can coexist harmoniously. Asymmetry in Swiss design is achieved by placing elements in an off-center position or by creating a sense of movement and tension through the use of contrasting sizes, shapes, and spaces. This technique helps to break the monotony of symmetrical layouts and adds a layer of visual complexity that keeps the viewer engaged. By combining the stability of the grid system with the dynamism of asymmetrical layouts, Swiss designers can create compositions that are both orderly and visually stimulating. This balance between structure and creativity is a key aspect of Swiss design, allowing for the creation of innovative and effective visual communication. Having explored the key characteristics that define Swiss design, we can see why it has remained so influential and effective. These principles have not only shaped the world of graphic design, but have also left a lasting impact on various other fields. The impact of Swiss design extends far beyond Switzerland, leaving an indelible mark on various aspects of visual communication and design practices worldwide. Let's explore how the principles of Swiss design have influenced corporate identity, wayfinding systems, digital interfaces, modernist architecture, and industrial design. Swiss design has played a crucial role in shaping the corporate identity of many global brands. Companies like Apple and Google have adopted the clean, minimalist aesthetics and functional principles of Swiss design to create their visual identities. Apple, known for its sleek and user-friendly products, has embraced the Swiss design ethos in both its hardware and software designs. The use of clean lines, simple geometric shapes, and a limited color palette in Apple's product design reflects the influence of Swiss minimalism. Apple's branding and marketing materials also adhere to the principles of clarity and simplicity, making the brand instantly recognizable and easily understandable. Google has also incorporated Swiss design principles into its branding and user interfaces. The Google logo with its clean sans serif typeface and balanced proportions is a testament to the influence of Swiss typography. Google's user interfaces, such as those found in its search engine and other applications, prioritize readability and usability, adhering to the Swiss design emphasis on clarity and functionality. 
wayfinding systems which help people navigate through complex environments such as airports, hospitals, and public transportation hubs have also been significantly influenced by Swiss design. The principles of clarity, simplicity, and consistency are essential in creating effective wayfinding systems that can be easily understood by people from diverse backgrounds. Swiss design's emphasis on the use of grid systems and sans-serif typefaces ensures that signage is legible and organized, making it easier for individuals to find their way. For example, the iconic wayfinding system of the New York subway, designed by Massimo Vignelli and Bob Norda in the 1970s, was heavily influenced by Swiss design principles. The use of Helvetica typeface, standardized icons, and a clear hierarchical structure exemplifies the Swiss approach to visual communication. The rise of digital technology has further amplified the influence of Swiss design. The principles of clarity, simplicity, and functionality are critical in designing user interfaces, also known as UIs and user experiences, also known as UX, for digital platforms. Websites, mobile apps, and software applications often draw on Swiss design principles to create intuitive and visually appealing interfaces. The use of grid systems in web design helps to structure content in a logical and consistent manner, enhancing readability and usability. Clean sans-serif typefaces, minimalist layouts, and a focus on essential elements assure that users can easily navigate and interact with digital interfaces. For example, the design of Google's material design introduced in 2014 reflects Swiss design principles. Material design emphasizes a clean, grid-based layout, consistent typography, and clear, bold colors, creating a cohesive and user-friendly experience across different devices and platforms. Swiss design influence extends beyond graphic design to modernist architecture. The emphasis on functionality, simplicity, and the use of geometric forms resonates with the principles of modernist architecture, which emerged in the early 20th century. Architects like Lou Corbusier, who was active in Switzerland and France, embraced the minimalist and functional approach of Swiss design. Corbusier's architectural works, such as the Villa Savoy and the Uniti Habitation, showcase the use of clean lines and open floor plans and an emphasis on functionality. The principles of Swiss design are evident in the clarity and simplicity of these structures, which prioritize human needs and practical use. Swiss design principles have also influenced the field of industrial design, where the focus on functionality and simplicity is paramount. Products designed with Swiss principles in mind are often characterized by their clean aesthetics, user friendliness, and attention to detail. Dieter Rams, a prominent industrial designer, was deeply influenced by Swiss design. His work for the German consumer electronics company Braun is a prime example of how Swiss design principles can be applied to industrial design. Rams products, such as radios, record players, and calculators, are known for their minimalist design, intuitive interfaces, and functional elegance. Ram's 10 principles of good design echo the ethos of Swiss design, emphasizing the importance of simplicity, honesty, and functionality. Having explored the far-reaching influence of Swiss design across various fields, we can see how its principles have shaped modern design practices. Now let's discuss why Swiss graphic design is so effective and identify three specific reasons for its enduring success. Swiss graphic design has maintained a reputation for being exceptionally effective. This effectiveness can be attributed to several key factors that have made Swiss design a lasting and influential force in the world of visual communication. Let's explore three specific reasons in detail. One of the most compelling reasons for the effectiveness of Swiss design is its focus on clarity and readability. In today's fast-paced world, where people are constantly bombarded with information from multiple sources, clear and easy-to-read design is more important than ever. Grid systems, sans-serif typefaces, and minimalism all work together Together to create a cohesive design that create eye-catching pieces that are easy to read. Another reason for the enduring success of Swiss graphic design is its timelessness. Unlike trendy designs that can quickly become outdated, the minimalist and functional principles of Swiss design remain relevant and effective across decades. This longevity is a testament to the strength and universality of its underlying principles. A minimalist aesthetic, functional approach, and consistency and cohesion to create designs that will stand the test of time. 
The versatility of Swiss graphic design is another key factor in its effectiveness. The principles of Swiss design can be applied across a wide range of media and contexts, providing a solid foundation that can be adapted to different needs while maintaining its effectiveness. This adaptability to different media, flexibility in application, and universal appeal all unite together to help create systems where all of these principles can be applied. The effectiveness of Swiss graphic design can be attributed to its focus on clarity and readability, its timeless and enduring aesthetic, and its versatility across various media and contexts. By understanding and applying these principles, designers can create work that is not only visually appealing, but also highly functional and effective. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to DesignSmith for more design insights and tutorials. Don't forget to leave a comment below and let me know what you think about Swiss design. Please consider subscribing to support the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.